Ever since iOS 14 dropped, beyond getting used to the app library, messing around with widgets, your iPhone snitching on any apps that might be spying on you, and tapping on the back of your phone to launch apps, there has been a rather silent set of updates for the camera system in iOS 14 that not many seem to be talking about or might not even be aware of. So since a not so ignorant you decided to click and watch this video, here's four underrated camera upgrades in RS14. Kicking off with a minor but thoughtful one, a visual assist to help keep your shot steady when shooting in night mode. As your arms are burning up from holding up your phone trying to keep your night mode shot steady, if you drift too much, a little crosshair shows up to guide you back to where your exposure began. Using data from your phone's sensors, definitely helpful since the preview doesn't refresh once your exposure begins, but I guess it can also be interpreted as your phone rolling its virtual eyes at your inability to hold something still. And feature number two is actually a performance increase. There's this new toggle under camera settings called Prioritize Faster Shooting. Turning it on increases your continuous shooting speed when you essentially spam that shutter button. With the toggle set to on, I was able to shoot at about double the speed, roughly four photos per second compared to two per second with the setting disabled. Now what happens exactly to speed up shooting when you flip that toggle switch? The only explanation from Apple was a rather vague one. It just says it intelligently modifies how photos are processed so you can shoot even faster. Hmm. My hunch was it having something to do with deep fusion, so I ran some tests. Under medium levels of light, not checking prioritize faster shooting resulted in all the photos being captured with deep fusion applied, and with the setting enabled, the camera detects when you're shooting rapidly and drops deep fusion processing as soon as the third photo to make way for speed. Now that does mean there will be a slight drop in image quality after the first few photos. You can see in my set of photos here, there is a noticeably lower level of detail from the third photo onwards as the phone stops applying deep fusion after the second photo. Not sure how this might work for other iPhones without deep fusion, but this is my theory based on the iPhone 11 Pro. Again, this is just a theory there could be other things at play. To add to that theory, the setting also doesn't seem to make much of a difference when you are shooting in very bright light, probably because it's when deep fusion would not be applied anyway. I was already able to hit about a 4 frames per second continuous shooting without the toggle enabled, and even with it enabled, it didn't seem to make much of a difference either. The toggle also doesn't seem to have an effect on burst mode as well. And speaking of burst mode, why not just use burst mode instead of mashing the shutter button? The only advantage I can think of is you can still get live photos if you press the shutter button rapidly, whereas with burst mode, there's no way to get live photos with that. Boy number two was a long one. Number three, photo captions. Not really a feature related to image capture, but very nice for organizing them after capture. You can swipe up on your images in the Photos app and type in a description right underneath it. Big deal about this is that description is searchable especially useful for labeling photos you know you might come back to, so you can look them up easily to fetch them from that haystack of photos in your phone. They're also saved into the metadata of the photo under the description field. And finally, there is a new feature that lets you set an exposure compensation value for an entire shooting session. It's tucked away in the little pop-up menu alongside your timer toggles and stuff. You dial in a value and it shows up as a nice little exposure bar in your heads-up display. And if, say, you dial in that you want your photos underexposed by one stop, it's gonna do that for every single photo you take onwards until you exit the camera app and come back in again. That way it won't reset after every single shot just for you to have to set it again. Now there is one more thing that's not exactly an improvement, but I would say that it is a significant change in the camera functions of RS14, and that is the removal of the capture outside frame function that we first saw in RS13 alongside the launch of the iPhone 11. That feature was used to capture extra information with the next wider lens for you to adjust your framing after the shots at the expense of disabling deep fusion, but that feature would appear to have been removed. I would suppose because not many people use it. So those were a few changes made to the camera experience following the RS14 update based on my experience with the iPhone 11 Pro Max, which thanks to the recent launch of the iPhone 12s is no longer the latest flagship. But let me know in the comments if there's anything I missed and check out my other videos because it would be somewhat upsetting if you don't.